It's circa 1000, and the way crimes are viewed is, unsurprisingly, based on Anglo-Saxon ideas about both justice and how society should be organised. The most notable of these beliefs are that the role of the community in policing the behaviour of others is very important, that God is the final judge of guilt or innocence, and that the status and position of different groups should be clear in the law. Circa 1000 to 1066, Anglo-Saxon Law Enforcement the Saxons believe that it is the victim's responsibility to seek justice, but that the community should also play a part in delivering this justice. Loyalty to your community is seen as a duty. By the 10th century, English shires have been divided into smaller administrative areas called hundreds. Being administrative areas means that they can be in varying sizes in terms of land. Each hundred is then divided into ten tithings, with one tithing being a group of ten households. All men, boys over the age of 12, in a tithing, are responsible for the behaviour of all other men in their tithing. One man from each hundred and one from each tithing have to meet regularly with the king's shire reeve, sheriff, for the area. The role of these men is to prevent crime, particularly cattle theft, in their communities, and when chasing a cattle thief, a hundredsman is entitled to take two tithing men with him. Developments such as these make the community increasingly important in Anglo-Saxon law enforcement. The community as a whole, however, is equally responsible for tracking down those suspected of crimes. Anyone who witnesses a crime can raise a hue and cry, which is a fancy way of saying that they can shout for help, and everyone who hears their cry for help is expected to drop what they're doing and help chase down and capture the suspect. Saxon justice also relies heavily on religion to decide if a person is guilty of a crime. Oaths are an important way of proving innocence. Hearings take place in public, and the accused can swear their innocence under oath. They can also call upon other community members to support their claims as oath helpers. Most of the time, the accused get to walk away free, which may seem ineffective, but as communities are small and close, it's very difficult for repeat offenders to get away with things. A repeat offender, or someone who has been caught red-handed, won't be given the option of swearing their innocence under oath. Where there isn't enough evidence to prove someone's guilt, the church gets to step in. The accused can now be subjected to a trial by ordeal, a test of guilt in the eyes of God. Some examples of trial by ordeal are trial by hot water, trial by cold water, and trial by hot iron. In a trial by hot iron or water, the accused has their hand burnt and then bandaged. A few days later they check up on the wound and if it has healed well then God has judged them to be innocent. If it hasn't, then God says they're guilty. Trial by cold water works in a similar way, except in this case the accused has their hands tied and is thrown into water which has been blessed by a priest. If the person sinks then they are innocent because the water has accepted them as pure but if they float, then they are guilty as they have been rejected by the water. It's also important to note that Christian thinking has an influence on the more general ideas the Saxons have about punishments. For some crimes, including petty theft, the church advises maiming, causing a person physical harm. The belief is that, unlike execution, this type of punishment gives the criminal a chance to seek forgiveness from God. Circa 1000 to 1066 Anglo-Saxon law enforcement. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and tell all your friends. If you like what I do enough that you think I should get paid for it, then you can find a link to my Patreon in the description or go to patreon.com forward slash a long long time ago. It's probably also in the corner and on screen right now. You can get your name at the end of the video and you can also help to feed me as by the time this video goes out I will have moved away to university and I want to be able to eat whilst I'm there as student finance don't think that I should be able to afford food. We can get into a discussion about student loans at some other time. We're Sathye Hala.